meditate on the divine supreme for the peace and happiness of the whole humanity om stavaka yaja dharmasya sarvada namaswarupine stavaka yaja dharmasya sarvada namaswarupine avatar varishtha ramakrishnayate namah asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotagamaya mrityor ma mrtangamaya om shanti 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 let us offer our salutations to shri ramakrishna the embodiment of all religions the supreme god incarnate let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality <coughs> discussing teachings of Shri Ramakrishna taken from the gospel his teachings are given to us in so many ways very simply in a very simple way but in a very effective way Shri Ramakrishna has told many stories and parables with great spiritual significance his profound wisdom we can see in the gospel of shri ramakrishna once shri ramakrishna was talking to his disciples about the great character that was in mahabharat his name was bhishma bhishma was laying on his bed of arrows still he was not dead he was waiting for the time to leave his body he could leave his body any time he wanted he had that special power whenever he wanted to cast off the body he could do it well when he was in that state he was found shedding tears shri krishna and the pandavas they were all standing near bhishma they were all surprised why bhishma was shedding tears and arjun was perplexed so he said how strange our grandfather bhishma himself who is very truthful and wise the master of his own self he is one among us eight great vasus even such a person as bhishma is overcome by maya in his dying hour why is it he is shedding tears this was heard by bhishma and he replied he saw lord krishna and said to him well krishna you know very well that i am not crying for this or that why i am shedding tears because when i think that even the pandavas whom the lord himself is serving as charioteer have to pass through so many hurdles endless troubles and tribulations i am overpowered with the thought that the ways of god cannot in the least be comprehended and so i couldn't restrain my tears that was the explanation given by bhishma he was not desiring anything he was not afraid of death his whole life was based on ethical and moral values a great devotee in the real sense of the term very greatly devoted to lord krishna so he gave the reason why he was shedding tears there's a famous verse in bhartraharis vairagya shatakam 100 verses are there all these verses have great spiritual significance one of the verse says yada bhavi na tad bhavi bhavi chenna tadanyatha iti chinta vishagnoyam agadaha kinna piyate he is telling that which is not to be shall never be that which is to be shall never not be why do you not drain this drought which will 
eradicate the poison of anxiety from you. To the wise man, God is in his heaven and all is right with the world. The wise man has no regrets and he has no anxieties. Believing in the divine governance of the world, he sees the hand of providence in every happening. Of such a wise person, Lord Krishna tells in the Bhagavad Gita how he behaves. Yo nagrishyati na dveshti na shochati na kankshati shubha shubha parityagi bhakti maan yasame priya. Such a wise man is full of devotion. He neither rejoices nor hates nor sorrows nor desires. He has renounced both good and evil. Such a person is very dear to me. God has his own ways which are often inscrutable to us. In our ignorance of divine purpose and plan, we often feel worried when things do not happen according to our likes and fancies. The man of discernment who is endowed with a higher vision is at peace with himself and with the world, for he perceives the operation of divine will in every occurrence. On the next profound wisdom of Sri Ramakrishna, he was talking about perseverance. In spiritual path, perseverance is very essential for success. Sri Ramakrishna gives an example in the Gospel. He says, the angler, anxious to hook a big fish, he waits calmly for hours together, having thrown the bait and the hook into water. Similarly, the devotee should keep on practicing his devotions with zeal and steadfastness. At the same time, he must be very patient. Such a person is sure at last to find God. So perseverance is a must for spiritual seekers who are striving to get success in spiritual path. He who will learn to swim must attempt swimming for some days. None can venture to swim in the sea of Brahman. He must make many ineffectual attempts at first before you can successfully swim at last. Great tasks are never done in a hurry. Slow and steady wins the race. So patience and perseverance alone ensure success. Sri Ramakrishna very emphatically said that one should cultivate patience and one should persevere in spiritual practices. He should never yield to weaknesses. He should concentrate wholly on the devotional practices and he must focus his attention on correcting himself thoroughly. In spiritual path, mind control is necessary. Without controlling the mind, senses cannot be controlled. Without the control of the senses and the mind, the man loses his wisdom and behaves in a brutal way, loses all humanness and degrades himself to brute level, becomes worse than an animal. But then mind control is not so easy. It is true. But all Spiritual disciplines stress upon this particular point. However difficult it may be, one should strive sincerely for controlling the mind. Please note that it is never accomplished in a trice. It comes only as a result of a long process of persistent effort. There is a verse in the Sanskrit which says, Utseka udade riyadvat kushagre naika binduna manaso nigrahastad vado bhaved aparikyadataha. That patience which would bail out the sea drop by drop at the tip of a straw of kushagras will, when unwearingly kept up, establish mind control. In Raj Yoga, Swami Vivekananda tells. A beautiful story. Once Nara, the great Rishi, the knower of Brahman, who could travel anywhere in the universe, he could go to heaven, he could come to earth, he can go anywhere. Once he was on his way 
to celestial regions, he passed through a forest. There were two ascetics who were practicing spiritual disciplines. Somehow they came to know that the great Rishi Narad was coming along in their path. They knew well that Narad could go to any place in the universe. So they were curious to know when they would be liberated. So when Narad Mahashi came in that path, one of them was doing severe spiritual practices, so much so, a huge anthill grew over him. And he was asking Narad, well Narad, I am doing these practices for such a long time. Would you please let me know when I will be blessed by the vision of God? Well, Narad said, let me come and tell you after some time. Then he met the another person, the second one, but he was of a different type. Though he was also practicing spiritual devotions, he was a person of emotions who practiced path of devotion. He was jolly type, was dancing and singing, repeating Lord's name. So, he was just spending his days and months and years singing and dancing, repeating divine name of God. So, he also wanted to know when he would be liberated. Both of them were eager to get liberation. That fact is there. Well, after many years, Narad came back on the same path and he came to the man on whom the antil had grown. He was very anxious to know the reply and Narad said, Well, about your liberation, I came to know that you will have to take four more births yet. You will have to be born again four times. That means you will have to pass through four generations. That fellow became so much disheartened and disappointed. He thought for such a long time he did severe austerities. God would simply come and stand before him. Well, he had to wait. Then he went to another person who was also eagerly waiting to know the reply and he told him, look, there is a tamarind tree can you count how many leaves are there in the tamarind tree? You can't count them. There are so many leaves are there. So, Narada told him, you will have to take so many births, countless births, before you could expect liberation. But the fact was, he pointed to the tamarind tree. If the tamarind tree has thousand leaves, that means you will have to take thousand births in order to get final liberation. But this man was not depressed in the least. On the other hand, he became very happy to know this result because he was assured he would be liberated after so many births. And in his experience he found that time was passing away like seconds. So he remarked, I shall have freedom at, after such a short time. He was jumping and dancing and singing God's name louder. Then he heard a voice which announced, My child, you will have liberation this minute. That pointed out Swami Vivekananda was a reward for his perseverance. He was ready to work through all those births. Nothing discouraged him. But the man on whom ant will grow, even former births were too long for him. He had no patience, he had no perseverance. So, one who has perseverance will certainly get success in spiritual path. Another, all the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna, we find how profound 
profound wisdom you can see and you can feel you can experience shri ramakrishna tells how attitude is very important bhavana attitude determines attainment if you have good attitude surely you will see god undoubtedly you will get success in spiritual path then shri ramakrishna tells a story through stories and parables and anecdotes shri ramakrishna would convey his profound teachings of wisdom once a man wanted to cross a river there was no boat at that time well he was fortunate to meet a sage who happened to come there he gave him an amulet and said this will carry you across so he gave that amulet amulet to that person and told him carry this with great devotion you will have no problem no difficulty on the way you will be able to cross over the water well in the beginning he had so much faith in what the sage said but before he had gone half the way he became curious to know what was it inside that amulet so he tried to open and found just a piece of paper on which the sacred name of rama the lord of the universe was written just rama when he saw this he just carelessly remarked is this the whole secret that is a point when he became skeptical almost no sooner did this skepticism enter his mind than he sank down it is a faith in the name of the lord that works wonders for faith is life and want of faith is death if you have faith in god you will see how god is protecting you all the time through all circumstances shri ramakrishna tells another story it is said that a bath in the ganges washes away all sins shiva and parvati were talking in kailas and parvati the divine consort of lord shiva became little worried hundreds and thousands of people take a bath in the ganges every day that means the number of sinless and therefore salvation worthy people must be very large indeed and this might upset the world process so what's the matter how do you explain this she asked lord shiva then lord shiva said well you come with me i will show you you will know the reason what would happen how it works so mahadeva took the form of a an old husband aged husband and asked his consort parvati to accompany him as a young wife young wife and old husband they came to ganges when they reached the bank of the ganges suddenly the old husband breath is last there was a great commotion lots of people were there the body of this old man had to be cremated and the people who were there in ganges at the time they expressed their sympathy for the helpless widow and they were prepared to help her in cremating the body of this old husband who died well the wife of the old husband she put a condition that is only a holy sinless man should touch and place the body on the pyre a man who touches this body of the old husband must be totally free from all sins such a person only should touch this body and put it on the pyre when this condition was put all people became 
thoughtful. How can there be a person who is totally free from sins? So nobody came forward. After a while, a villager who came to the place and learnt of the matter simply rushed to the Ganges, had a hurried dip in its waters and came back saying, Mother, I have bathed in the Ganges and become sinless. I am worthy enough to touch the body. Immediately Shiva and Parvati blessed that villager who had total faith in taking bath in Ganges, who really felt he was free from all sins. Then Shiva told Parvati, You see, of all the hundreds of people who came for a sanctifying bath in the Ganges, only one actively believed that the Ganges is a purifier and only to that one did the merit of the Ganges bath really accrue. So that means your bhavana is very important. If you think Ganges is only simply water, that's all. The benefit also just like that. If you have spiritual attitude, you will have spiritual benefit. Another story Sri Ramakrishna tells. A temple priest had to be away from home for a day on some, some business. He called his son. He was just a boy of seven years old. A guileless boy. The father told him, My boy, you know I am going every day to the temple at noon to offer food to the deity. Today I depute you to do that work. The mother of the boy gave him the food to be offered and the boy went to the temple. He laid the food in front of the idol and implored it to eat. He was guileless and very simple. His mind was totally free from all uh, impurities. When he was praying God to come and eat the offerings, there was no response. Then he began to weep and he began to pray. He said, O oh God, Father asked me to feed you today. If you don't eat, Father will not. Father will think I failed to do my duty. When he said this with all earnestness, his appeal made the Lord come and eat the food. When he went home with the food vessel emptied of its contents, the mother took him to task. But the boy brought her to the temple and convinced her of the Lord's having made a hearty meal of the food offered. For the Lord, who is infinite distances away from the wise grown-ups, reveals himself to babes. Another story Sri Ramakrishna tells, a disciple who had firm faith in the infinite power of his Guru, walked over a river by simply uttering his name. Seeing this, the Guru thought, Well, is there such a power in my mere name? Then how very great and powerful must I be? The next day, the Guru also tried to walk over the river. When he started walking, he began to say, I, I, I. But no sooner did he step into the water, than he sank down, and was drowned, for the poor man did not know how to swim even. It is the disposition of the mind towards an object or an act that determines the worth or the worthlessness of a feeling or a performance. There is a Sanskrit verse, Mantre, Tirthe, Dvije, Daive, Daivagye, Bheshaje, Gurav, Yadrashim, Bhavanam, Kuriyat, Siddhir Bhavati, Tadrashi. In respect, of a mantra, a tirtha, a Brahmin who is well in his spiritual disciplines, the deity, an astrologer, a physician and a guru, the kind of one's attainment is in accordance with the type of one's attitude towards his thing or person concerned. So, how clearly Sri Ramakrishna tells through these parables how the spiritual aspirant should cultivate spiritual virtues and how he should have proper attitude, how he should pay attention to control the mind and the senses and how he must be patient and persevere 
and how he must maintain his attitude all these things are very important for those who want to get liberation in this very life shri ramakrishna was talking to girish page 726 gospel of shri ramakrishna he said if i touch your feet surely that is the same as touching you laughter if a person goes to the ocean and touches but a little of its water he has surely touched the ocean itself fire as an element exists in all things but in wood it is present to a greater degree girish smilingly said i am looking for fire naturally i want to go to a place where i can get it master said smilingly yes fire as an element is present more in wood than in any other object if you seek god then seek him in man he manifests himself more in man than in any other thing if you see a man endowed with ecstatic love overflowing with prem mad after god intoxicated with his love then know for certain that god has incarnated himself through that man to master mahashay shri ramakrishna said there is no doubt that god exists in all things but the manifestations of his power are different in different beings the greatest manifestation of his power is through an incarnation again in some incarnations there is a simple manifestation of god's power it is the shakti the power of god that is born as an incarnation giri said narendra says that god is beyond our words and thought master said that's not altogether true he is no doubt unknowable by this ordinary mind but he can indeed be known by the pure mind the mind and intellect become pure the moment they are free from attachment to lust and gold the pure mind and pure intellect are one and the same god is known by the pure mind didn't the sages and seers of olden times see god they realize the all pervading consciousness by means of their inner consciousness girish said with a smile i defeated narendra in the argument master said oh no he said to me when girish gosh has so much faith in god's incarnation as man what can i say to him it is not proper to meddle with such faith girish said with a smile sir we are very free and easy with our words but m is sitting there with his lips shut right with his with his lips shut tight what in the world is passing through his mind what do you say about it sir master said with his laugh there's a common adage that tells people to beware of the following a man with a loose tongue a man whose mind cannot be fathomed even by an expert diver a man who sticks the sacred tulsi leaf in his ears as a sign of holiness a woman wearing a long veil to proclaim her chastity and the cold water of a reservoir covered with green scum by bathing in which one gets typhoid fever these are all dangerous things with a smile he said but it is different with him he is a serious man all laugh chunilal said people have begun to whisper about him's conduct the engan narain and baburam are his students as are narain paltu purna and tej chandra the rumor is that he brings these boys to you and so they neglect their studies the boys guardians 
hold M responsible. Master said, but who would believe their words? They were thus talking when Narendra entered the room and bowed low before the master. He was a student 17 or 18 years old and a fair complexion. He was dearly loved by the master who was very eager to see the boy and feed him. Many a time at the temple garden at Dakshineshwar, the master wept silently for Narain. He looked on him as a manifestation of Narayan himself. Let us stop here. Because recently we just witnessed a greatest tragedy, devastating fire, destroying the World Trade Center, causing untold sufferings, thousands of people. So it is an indication to show how the world is being tormented by violence, hatred and crime. It shows people have degraded themselves. They are losing all human fineness. All human qualities are disappearing one by one. It is a great tragedy. God alone should save. And for all the departed souls, we offer our sincere prayers for the peace of those departed. Well, Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, though circumstances and surroundings and situations have forced some people to die, but please know that there is no death for the soul. They are all living. All those who, who have dead, they are all living. Death is only for the gross body that is gone. All the souls, all the individuals who have died, they will again take their birth, finer birth, and they will be able to continue their life. Nothing to worry about that. But the point is, the sufferings, how people are made to undergo the fire of suffering, it's all because of too much of extrovert tendencies and not focusing upon the divine inner nature, not giving any attention for developing inner personality. So you see the negative forces, the evil rising up its head. Well, it will not go for a long time. The evil will be removed. God is working through in, in what manner, in what ways the evil should be removed. God has his own plans and it will be done. So God's will, everything will be okay at the right time. That's all I can say. But if people take to spiritual practices seriously and sincerely, certainly most of these problems can be easily solved without any difficulty. Point is, we should make people take to spiritual practices instead of becoming fanatics and fundamentalists and dogmatic. That's all that we can say. So, yes, actions committed by the culprits will not go unpunished. All those responsible will be certainly punished. God has got his own ways of punishing them and that is the doctrine of karma which is one of the tenets of uh, Vedantic tradition. Everyone is bound by the law of karma. So simply by telling he did not know what he did doesn't mean that he will go unpunished. If he thinks he did it without knowing, he also will have the same way in some other form and like that the actions repeat. History is repeating itself in various ways. In olden days we used to have monsters who were causing terrible suffering to the innocent people, saints and sages, meditating in the forest and God would incarnate and take steps to kill those people who are tormenting the innocent people. So, this fight between good and evil is going on from time immemorial. This fight will be always there. So, how we should learn the lesson through these observations, that is important. That's very important. We have to learn through suffering. So many ways of learning. One way of learning is through suffering. Some people even don't learn through suffering also. Ultimately, it comes to name, power, position. That is true. Even, uh, even Lord Krishna himself uh, said during his lifetime, Yadavas uh, were very powerful. They became very powerful and because of that power, they became arrogant. 
full of ego and all this uh, jealousy hatred all these things rose again in their hearts and krishna himself tells all these people they get destroyed themselves it happened so they insulted the sages and finally for some reason they fought each other all the whole yadava race simply cleaned off it is just like just like that if people don't learn then they will be wiped out the people should try to understand the tenets of uh, religion properly and proper interpretation and proper thinking coming together is very important chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drown deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for weary souls various are thy names o lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is thy richness who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant and sizingly the name of the lord o lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue the playthings of lust or the toys of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet ah how i long for the day when an instant separation from the old lord will be as a thousand years when my heart burns away with its desire and the world without thee is a heartless void prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion neither imploring the embrace of thy arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who still as the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for the what my heart's beloved thou and thou alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality we all be free from dangers we all realize what is good we all be actuated by noble thoughts we all rejoice everywhere we all be happy we all be free from disease we all realize what is good may none be subject to misery may the wicked become virtuous may the virtues that are in tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free may good be dead all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may the worlds be prosperous and happy may the clouds pour rain in time may the earth be blessed with crops may all countries be freed from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the destroyer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased he being satisfied the whole universe feels satisfied